Good evening, church family. Uh, Pastor Denny Evans here, First Baptist Church Putney. I uh, hope y'all had a wonderful day today, uh, here this Sunday, the Memorial Day weekend. Uh, <clears throat> I pray that as uh, you've gone throughout this day that uh, it's uh, been a day that's been pleasing uh, to God uh, as you enjoyed your families, hopefully together, uh, and uh, spent time in God's Word. Uh, before we get started tonight, I do want us to uh, remember all of those around us that are that are sick and going through difficult times right now. Uh, we know that uh, the COVID-19 thing is still out there and it's real. Uh, hoping and praying that uh, sooner than later it will uh, uh, it, it will be over. Don't know what uh, <clears throat> what that's going to be like, when that's going to be, but uh, that's our prayer. Uh, we pray for those that are sick. Uh, those that are dealing with cancer, uh, those who are dealing with mental and financial situations in their lives right now. Uh, just uh, life, in, life in general so many times is difficult, and we just need to lift each other up like we talked about last week, you know, about encouragement, about uh, sharing with each other uh, the love of the Father, and then uh, <clears throat> being so thankful for all that He does for us. Uh, continue to pray for uh, our country, I continue to pray for uh, our, our nation as a whole, that we might be uh, the nation that God intended for us to be, uh, seeking Him, keeping Him first, and through all the decisions that are made, <clears throat> that uh, we go by His guidance and by, by His alone. Uh, we pray for uh, those that are lost. We pray for those that have never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, and you know, as always, you know, when we have our messages and we have our time to uh, share God's Word, uh, one of the things we always like to encourage is if there's anyone that's uh, listening to any of the services that we uh, are conducting, uh, that uh, you may make that decision to accept Christ uh, before it's everlasting too late. Simple process, uh, cost a lot uh, from the standpoint of, God, of Jesus uh, sharing uh, His life and all that he had to go through for us. <clears throat> but all we have to do is understand that based on God's word that we are sinners uh, born into this world with a sin nature and that the way that we get into uh, fellowship with God Almighty is through Jesus and Jesus alone. Uh, so we pray that uh, if you're out there tonight listening to us that uh, uh, you'll make that most important decision in life. But if you would, just bow with me for a second as I... Uh, Open us in prayer as we think about all these needs around us. Father, we truly thank you for uh, this beautiful day that you've given us, dear Father. A time to reflect on Memorial Day. A time to reflect on freedom as a nation and as a human race. The, the, the important thing is there, as far as the human race is concerned, is that we accept Christ as Lord and Savior. <clears throat> and I thank you so much for that. And I pray tonight, dear Father, that as we think about all these needs around us, all the ones that are going through difficult times, unemployment, uh, sickness, ailments, or whatever may be going on <clears throat> in our individual lives, dear Father, that, uh, that you'll have total control, that you might guide and direct as only you can. And just give uh, each and every one of us what we need in our individual lives that it might bring honor and glory to you. So, Father, bless the reading of your word tonight as we spend just a few minutes uh, discussing from the New Testament uh, some of the things that we encounter in this life. Of course, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> as I was thinking about, uh, you know, what to and praying about what to talk about tonight, uh, something came to mind that I, I think is very re relevant in the times in which we live uh, that so many people have uh, issues with, difficulties with, and and how to deal with them. And, you know, in, in two different categories of people, of course, you know, believers, born-again believers, uh, and then those that are lost in the world, <clears throat> they deal with this in, in a different way. But... It's called temptation. The word is temptation. And what we're going to do, we're going to just discuss for a few minutes here before we look at the word 
know, what is this temptation that, that I'm talking about? What, what, what am I referring to when I say temptations? Well, I think it's very important, number one, that we understand that temptation does not come from God. You know, God will try or test people, but he will never tempt uh, because tempt or temptation means that you're striving to get someone to do something that is evil, do something that is not pleasing to God. When we have trials in our life, that's a test, if you will. But it is not uh, in any shape, form, or fashion designed to cause us to fall into sin. It's just a test in life that we that we go through. And we see many scripture passages where God tries or tests individuals, but we never see any cases where he tempts them. But uh, Satan, on the other hand, he's a, he's a very good uh, tempter. And we see that all around us today. And, you know, we may think about that. Well, you know, how am I tempted as a believer? Well, there's just so many different categories of temptation. Uh, you know, we'll just, we'll just kind of throw a few of them out there. <clears throat> One of those could be uh, lust for money or a desire for greed. You know, there are people in this world, and I hate to say it, but there's even believers in this world that their motivation in life is to see how much more that they can get, how much more that they can obtain. Uh, and, and the bad part of that is, is they're putting that above God. Now, I, I want us to understand that God does not mind us having things. The problem is, is when things become more important than God. That's where the problem comes in. And God knows our hearts. He knows what, what our capabilities are and what our, own, what our abilities are as far as dealing with things like money. But that's one form of temptation, <clears throat> is greed and striving to have more and more and more. Another one is with sexual immorality. You know, uh, back when I was in high school, uh, in the early days, in the 70s and the 80s, and even beyond that, the, the problems with immorality was nothing like they are today. And for those of y'all that are watching tonight, I believe you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, it was a, a, I don't even really remember the word or, or the terminology pornography brought up, you know, back in the uh, early 70s, uh, maybe even early 80s, but I'm sure it was starting to come around. But it is so prevalent now and it's so unfortunate because with all the technology that we have, those temptations are very easy uh, to come upon people, <clears throat> lost and saved. And we need to be very, very careful about that because that leads nothing to but to uh, evil, sin, and everything that's opposite and pleasing to God. You know, we talk about money, we talk about pornography or, or immoral living, but there, but there's other things too. There, there's other types of things out there. Gluttony, you know, overeating. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on a quest right now myself to get off of Mountain Dews. I, I love Mountain Dews. Uh, thank God I've gone three days without one so far, and that's uh, been very difficult. But, uh, you know, we need to take care of our temple, and, and that's, that's the bottom line here. You know, you know, whether it be drinking soft drinks, overindulging in, in soft drinks, uh, drinking alcohol, uh, smoking, I mean, any of those things, gluttony, just overeating, things that would cause us to harm the temple, uh, <clears throat> which, was at, which we keep the Holy Spirit uh, inside of us, we need, to, we need to abstain from those things. Well, that's sin when we do that. When we uh, when we give in to those types of temptations, um, you know, and then there's so many other things, you know, like pride, you know, and, and, and arrogance. I mean, th those are things that that are not pleasing to God. And when we think about temptation, you know, so many people are tempted to be uh, to act like they're better than somebody else, or or you know, be arrogant to that point. We, we need to stay away from that. You know, God expects us and, and, and desires for us to be meek and humble. Uh, 
you know, and, and there is no pride and arrogance in that. You know, that is just the way God intends for us to be. But tonight when we look at the scriptures, it's, it's a familiar passage to all of us as believers or should be when we think about Jesus and, and what he encountered uh, from Satan as he was, uh, as he was tempted. And we're going to look at these verses tonight just for a second, and we're going to talk about what God's Word says in chapter 4 of Matthew about the temptations of Jesus. And, you know, I've always been taught this, and I've always taught this myself, and I believe it. You know, Jesus was tempted far beyond anything we could have ever imagined. Anything we could ever encounter, he was, he was tempted far beyond that. So when we start thinking, oh, poor pitiful me, let's realize, believers, that our Savior has gone through far more than we will ever go through. And if he can come through it by his own human nature, then we can overcome it by our human nature with the power of God inside of us. So let's read these verses, and then we're gonna, we'll talk about them as we go. But bringing us up to speed where we're at, in the last part of chapter 3, uh, Jesus, in verse 16, says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto, to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus had just been baptized by John the baptizer. And God had revealed unto John as well as everyone that was around that this was the Son of God. This was the Messiah that had been promised so many years prior to this. So at this point in time, the baptism had taken place, and now Jesus was fixing to go directly into the wilderness to be tempted. So that's what we pick up in chapter 4 when it says, Then was Jesus led up, of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Notice it says tempted of the devil. The devil is the founder of temptation. It is he and he alone that tempts. Now some of his demonic forces around him are part of that, but the temptation itself actually comes from the devil. So as Jesus was led away, he was led away into the wilderness, led by the Spirit to be tempted. Verse 2, and, we had, when, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. Now think about that, guys and ladies. 40 days of fasting. The problem with this 40 days of fasting was nothing more than uh, lack of food, completely with maybe water to drink but that was it now how many of us out there tonight could go one day without food three days without food 10 days without food 40 days without food remember what i said earlier the temptations that jesus went through is far greater than anything that we have ever encountered or will ever encounter. So you can see why when Matthew writes this down, he says, and then after that he was hungry. His physical body was hungry. He went 40 days fasting, nothing to eat. He was hungry. Verse 3. It says, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, and, and Satan knew that he was, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Notice when Satan comes the first time. When he assumes that Jesus is at his weakest point. All right, think about that in our lives. When are we tempted? more often and if you really think about it and you're honest with yourself and i'm honest with myself it's when we are weak 
in our physical nature. When we have a desire for something to fill us, that is a perfect opportune time for Satan to come in to tempt us when we're weak. But always remember this, believers. Even though we may be physically weak, we should never be spiritually weak. We should always be spiritually strong. So, he goes on. If thou be the Son of God, and see, he knew, Satan knew that this was the Son of God, but yet he still tempted him. Command these stones to be made bread. But look what Jesus, how he responds to that in verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written. Now he, he makes comment, he makes note here that by God's very voice and his very word, when he says it is written, that means this comes from God Almighty, my Heavenly Father, Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Bread and water are good, but bread and water are not enough. We need more than that. We need to be able to take in spiritual food. Spiritual food, as he's talking about here, which is that that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. In the days in which Jesus was on the earth, the canon of Scripture was not completed. The Holy Spirit had not been given to believers but now it has so we have the word of god we have the bread here which we can enjoy and we can take in to fill us up far beyond what bread can ever do so the first temptation of satan has failed then the devil take them up into the holy city there in Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. Probably the pinnacle of the top of the highest point. He took him. He took Christ. And he saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, again, knowing that he was, but yet tempting him, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Satan was doing everything in his power to cause the Son of God, Jesus Christ, to sin. But look at the spiritual maturity of Christ here. Now, when I talk about the God side, we're talking about the human side, okay? Because when Christ died on the cross, he didn't die as God. He died as a human being that had lived a perfect life on the cross, okay? Very important to understand that. But he takes him up on the temple and says, look, look around you. Cast yourself down. The scriptures say, as Jesus, Jesus knows the scriptures, folks. He knows them inside and out. So remember that. Satan knows the scriptures. But he says, cast yourself down because you know what will happen. The angels have been, you've been given charge over the angels, and they'll come and take care of you. They'll, they'll just bring you up. True. Jesus does have charge over the angels. True, Jesus could have called 10,000 legions of angels at any time he wanted to while he was on the face of the earth, but he didn't do it. You know why? Because that wasn't in the Father's plan. He had a purpose to fulfill while he was on this earth, and it did not involve being saved by the angels during difficulties in his life. But Jesus said unto him in verse 7, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I can almost see him getting in the face of Satan saying, Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are tempting the Lord thy God? 
Remembering Satan was a defeated foe, was, is, and shall always be a defeated foe, but he will try to do everything possible to cause Christ to give in to temptation here and sin and to us today. You remember all those things I talked about earlier? About the money and the sexual immorality and the, uh, the temple, our temple? Satan will try everything in his power to get us to give in to temptation so that we can become sinful and we have to rebuke that. I've always used a couple of different things uh, when Satan comes a knocking at my door and I've always encouraged others to do the same thing. But just, just start quote scriptures. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus wept. Just any verse, any scripture passage that comes from God's word, Satan cannot stand in the presence of that and he will have to turn and go the other way. That's what I encourage you to do. That's what I encourage all of us to do based on God's word. Well, two times, twice, Satan has failed. One more attempt will be made. Verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he saith unto him, All these things will I give thee. There's no Satan trying to give the things of this world to Christ if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now you're talking about the ultimate slap in the face. Satan was trying to say, if you're the son of God, and I really know that you are, just forsake your father and worship me and I'll give you all of the things of this world. You know, Satan's playing that same game today, except instead of talking to Jesus, he's talking to us. He's talking to mankind. He's saying, don't worship that God. Don't believe in him. And I will give you the things of this world. My fear is this, that there is many, a man and a woman, throughout history, that have given their allegiance to Satan to gain the wilds of this world. Even today, I believe there are men and women around this world today that have done that very same thing. They don't, they don't understand or don't care about the fact that God is supreme and almighty. But when Satan comes with his little trivial trial, not trials, but temptations, and, and, and tries to get that person, that individual, to follow him, it looks so good, it's so sweet, it's so tantalizing, it's so beautiful to the eyes that men and women give in to that. They give in to that. And then it becomes temptation. And then if they're not saved, they die and will spend an eternity in the devil's hell. So Jesus here hears these words from Satan. Fall down on your knees and worship me and I will give you all this stuff you see. And, and I can almost visualize, and I know he probably will, but I can almost visualize Christ and his response to the devil. Knowing that Jesus Christ had that relationship with his heavenly father, he said this, Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. Get away. Go away from me. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. There is a dividing line in serving God and serving mammon. You can't serve both. You serve one or you serve the other. You can't walk the fence. 
You serve God or you serve Satan. Jesus was plain about that. He would not give in to that of Satan. Believers, we need to look into our hearts tonight. We need to think about that. Where are we at in our world? We're being tempted by Satan in so many different ways. As believers, what path do we choose? The way of God, which we should, or is it the way of the devil? Of the Satan, satanic influence. There is no gain in eternity for following the way of Satan. There is no way. And for those of us that are believers, if we truly have our salvation and we still follow the ways of Satan, there's no rewards in heaven. There are nothing laid up for us there. And you may even need to really ask yourself the question, hmm, if I continue to follow the ways of Satan, am I really a believer? Have I really accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Or have I just been playing the game? Jesus knew who he was. Even after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting and being hungry, he still knew who he was. The human side of him knew who he was. So not once or twice, but three times, three times did Satan try through temptation to get Jesus to falter, to give in, but he never did. And then in verse 11, Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. Yeah, the, the angels came, but after Jesus had victory, Jesus was victorious. He is victorious. You know, we talked about Memorial Day this morning. You know, about the freedom we have here in this nation and as Christians in this world. And we talked about that victory, the resurrection of Christ. That was victory over the, over the tomb, over the grave. Jesus had victory over Satan's temptations. And believers, I want to say this to all of us. We can have that same victory over those temptations too. Don't give in to them. When he comes a knocking, when Satan comes a knocking, say, get thee behind me, Satan. I have no time for you. I serve the true and living God. And tonight as we, as we stop to think about this a little bit more before we dismiss, Believers, I don't know what type of temptations you're going through in your life. But I do know this. That God can overcome any of those temptations if you trust in Him. No matter what it is. No matter how difficult it may appear to you. So that's part of the problem. When temptation comes our way or when tasks come our way that look like they're just too overwhelming for us. And we try to figure them out. We can't, never will be able to. That's where we have faith and trust in God because he will help us overcome those things. He will allow us to have victory. But we have to test it, have to trust him. So again, I don't know what's going on in your lives. I can only speak for my life. But if you have temptations in your life right now, Go ahead and claim the name of Jesus and put them things away. Get rid of them. And for those out there tonight that are lost, you don't really understand the difference between temptation, trials, and, and all of these things because you're already on Satan's side. And not by choice, but by design because as a human being with an old sin nature, Without the blood of Jesus Christ over that sin nature, you're a part of the kingdom of Satan. God don't want it that way. God wants you to be part of his family, part of his kingdom in heaven. 
So my prayer for you tonight is this, if you're listening. Accept Christ as Lord and Savior before it's everlasting too late. Jesus tells us real plainly. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one cometh to the Father but by me. Not by Allah, not by uh, some other uh, Hindu beliefs, not by any other uh, sorts of doing good works, but only through Jesus Christ, believing in him, can you be saved. So that's my prayer tonight is that you would accept Christ. And if y'all would, just bow with me for just a minute. And I'd like to have a closing prayer for all of us. Our Heavenly Father, as we have talked tonight about temptation, and we've discussed how Satan is the tempter, but we've also discussed how you, Father, have the ability to give us the strength to go beyond and get beyond this temptation as your children. By the power of the Holy Spirit that resides inside of us, which is part of the Trinity, we have the ability to do that. But Father, but for those that are lost out there, they don't, they don't know how to get away from that temptation. But your word has taught us tonight, and it always shows us that there is a way out. And that's through accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So tonight, that's my prayer for my friends out there that are lost. Ask Jesus to come into your heart, to save your soul, to put that blood, that precious blood of Jesus over your sin nature, that you might be saved. So Father, as we go through tonight, as we go through this Memorial Day weekend, as we go through each and every day of our life, I pray that we may be the people you've called us to be, that we might say and do the things that are pleasing to you, and that when the tempter comes, that we'll claim victory in Jesus and overcome anything he sends our way. And I'll be careful to give you the praise and the honor and glory for it all. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, I pray that y'all have a wonderful week. I pray that uh, as you have an opportunity to uh, be the church while we're outside of the walls of our physical building church here, that you'll share some good news with somebody, a smile, a word, something that they need that comes from God. That's my prayer for each and every one of us that we might do that. So be blessed throughout the rest of this night. Have a good night's rest. And we'll look forward to uh, sharing with you again very soon. May God bless you. Goodbye.